The following video you're about to see is a spoiler-filled movie review. If you don't want to be spoiled, please skip the video. Are we good? Give me like a few seconds more before you click off, okay? Alright, let's continue. Hey everybody, it's me and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Avengers Infinity War review. Oh my god, we finally have the movie and it's good. It's amazing. Um... I'll talk about the spoilers towards the end mostly, but it might be a short video, it's a short review kind of, so. Alright, so what's the story? The story is that Thanos wants to have all six Infinity Stones to go destroy half of humanity with just a snap of his finger. Um, so he goes all around the galaxy, not galaxy really, like, he goes all around places searching for all six Infinity Stones and the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Thor and his group all has to find a way to destroy him and stop his plans and Doctor Strange. Do he succeed or does he fail and everybody's happy? Okay. Now for the spoilers. Um, well, I do have to say, the music was good. It got you really pumped, especially when they said Infinity War. You're like, yeah, let's go. It's ready. Yeah. The fighting scenes were good. The music for the fighting scenes were good. And, like, the suspense and everything, that, like, they actually know how to make you feel emotions. If you're supposed to feel happy, yeah, you feel happy about that moment. Felt to feel sad. Yeah, you feel sad about that moment. You felt pumped and excited. Oh, you're good. If you feel sad and you want to cry, oh man, you are gonna cry. <laughs> I will admit, um, there was some. There are many movies where I almost cried. Like I had a feeling I was gonna cry. Infinity War, even though it was just like one teardrop, I did cry. Like I'm not that big of an emotional crier, but I did cry in Infinity War because, ooh, the ending killed me. Like, ooh, okay, I'll explain that later. All right. So how does the movie go? Well, the movie starts off with Thanos going to Thor's ship from Thor Ragnarok. And uh, all the Asgardians are dead. Every single one of them. You don't see the body of Valkyrie, but I'm pretty sure she's dead. Loki and Thanos is like, Loki, give me the Tesseract or your brother gets it. Um, after torturing Thor, he's like, fine, I'll give it to you. And Thor is like trapped so he can't really move. And then after a few shenanigans with the Hulk and stuff, Heimdall, a little bit alive, transfer Hulk to Earth, and Thanos' kids are like, why'd you do that, dude? Uh, and they killed him. They killed him. Oof. Um, Heimdall is dead. <sighs> All the Asgardians are dead, kind of. Um, Loki tries to betray Thanos by stabbing him, but then Thanos grabs him by the neck and just goes like... He kind of like kills him choking, but then snaps his neck. And Loki's dead. Loki's officially dead. So my theory was correct. Screw you, Hannah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So with all the Asgardians dead, Thor's the only one. The ships explodes, and then we cut to Earth. Yeah. Um, it's okay, Thor's alive. So we cut through Earth, Banner crashes down to Earth while Doctor Strange and Wong are out about to get some subway or something, I don't know. And right when Thor crashes down, Iron Man's hanging out with Piper, Pap I always forget her name, I am so sorry for that. <laughs> Piper, I don't know. And right when they're about to do it, like, talk and hang out and stuff, like, oh man, let's make dinner tonight, I promise I won't be a superhero anymore. Doctor Strange's like, hey, we need your help. You want to help? And he's like, why should I help? And then just Bruce is out there like, dude, we need your help. And it's like, oh, hey, Bruce, where have you been? Let's catch up. So Bruce tells everybody in Iron Man about Thanos. And Iron Man's like, well, we could call Steve. And right when he's about to, something's happening in the sky. And it's like, well, I don't have to call him. Thank God. Um, they fight Bonnie Man and the tough guy. I always forget these names. I am so sorry. <laughs> he called it Bonnie Man Squidward, but... You see the micro, I want to say bleeding edge, I don't remember, but it's kind of not. You see that for me and everything, it's just like, ooh, it's so good and everything. Like, I heard some people going, woo, like it was softly because they didn't want to be too loud. It's a movie. Also, two of other Thanos' kids mm -hmm. goes towards Vision so he can get the um, his mind stone. Okay, totally forgot to add that in. I am so sorry. Okay, continue. 
So that fight happens. Spidey sees um, it happening, and then we all see that iconic scene when Zen's like, "Well, I'm gonna die." But we finally got Stan Lee cameo really early in the movie, though. Um, he plays the bus driver that's driving Peter to and Ned to school, kind of. And I thought that was funny. And he's like, "You guys act like you haven't seen a spaceship before, or like something like what? You haven't seen a spaceship before?" And I thought that was funny. I'm thinking. You know, I knew Stan Lee was going to probably be somewhere in this movie, but wow. <laughs> yeah. So after that, Ebony Man knocks out Doctor Strange and takes him away to try to torture him to take the Time Stone. Iron Man and Spider-Man follow him, and then they save him. Alien, you know, just blasts a hole to space, and the alien falls out. Yeah. Um, I, Spidey does get his Iron Spider suit so he can survive in space. And many things happen with Thor meeting up with the Guardians of the Galaxy, taking Rocket and Groot to go form his new hammer. We see Peter Dinklage. We finally see why Peter Dinklage was in the credits and well, in like the names. He doesn't play Pip the Troll. No, he doesn't. He plays the guy who helps mold Thor's new hammer, Stormbreaker. And I thought that was cool. I thought it was funny that he's a tiny midget. Not tiny people. Tiny, tiny person. I am sorry. I did not mean to say midget. I am so sorry. Um, he's a tiny person, but they CGI'd him with one of a green skin, kind of, it's kind of obvious. So, like, where he's giant and bigger than everybody, I thought that was cool. So, by this point, um, the Guardians go out to nowhere to go see the Collector, and Thanos takes Gamora, so, but that means Thanos already had three gems. Power gem, space gem, and a reality gem. Well, stone, sorry, stone. And Thanos' plan is actually going really well in everything. We do see some flashbacks back to Gamora and everything. Um, but we finally do see, like, I'm gonna, I am cutting a little bit in. Yeah, um, Cap takes everybody to Wakanda and everything. We see where the so and so finally is. And the protector kind of of it is Red Skull from Captain America, the first Avenger. We saw him hold the Tesseract and he was launched up to space. He, we finally found out where he was. So, yeah. We know where Red Skull is. We know where the last Soul Stone is. Gamora died for the Soul Stone. Now, that one was a little heartbreaking. I love Guardians of the Galaxy 2 way more than the first one. And I watch it over and over on Netflix so much. So, I kind of had... I, I, I was attached to these characters. And it was funny. Uh, a little bit. Thanos... Because... Red Skull said if Thanos needs a soul stone, he needs to sacrifice someone he really deeply loves. And Gomorrah was his adopted daughter, so he needed to kill his daughter. And Gomorrah didn't think about it till then. She's like, ha, see, you, you gotta put yourself in a pickle here because you don't love anybody. And then he turns around with the tears like, oh no. And then he grabs him, throws her off the cliff. She dies. He dies with a soul stone. And it's sad a little, yeah. So he finds out this information, he found out this information because Nebula, he tortured Nebula to kind of, like, guilt trip, um, Gamora to show, like, hey, I have the Soul Stone and I'm trying to, I don't want to tell him. And then was like, well, I'm going to torture her till you tell me. Go Nebula knocks out one of Thanos' guards, tell people, hey, Guardians, hey, meet me at the Titan. Dr. Strange and Iron Man are also there. They all fight for a little bit, like, oh man, I uh, Guardians of the Galaxy versus them. Um, they all kind of meet, they all kind of patch up and become a plan. And then they fight Thanos. It's an amazing battle and everything. You see everything. It's a battle. They're on Titan, they're fighting. They could have won! <laughs> and I know many people are going to get, like, get mad about the decision. They could have won if Star Lord could have handled his anger when. Nebula, like, kind of figured out he killed Gamora. His, like, Solo was punching Thanos. I think he hurt Mantis. So, like, that was kind of making, like, Thanos a little too powerful for Mantis. So she couldn't handle it. And they could have got the gauntlet off and everything. That, oh my god, I'm mad. Like, I'm not mad, but, like, god. It's kind of, this movie, it's kind of like they could have won if Star Lord didn't fuck everything up. I know, I have to probably bleep myself. I don't care. But yeah, Star Lord messes everything up for everything. Like he, they could have won this movie if Star Lord didn't mess up. 
So after Thor gets his hammer, though, like his new Stormbreaker, they go back to Wakanda to help Captain America fight everybody and everything. And it's an awesome battle. You know, you have Rocket Raccoon with um, the Winter Soldier, um, the White Wolf, Bucky Barnes, is shooting now and everything. It's like, ooh, man. The action is amazing. Vision, they're trying to get the stone out of Vision so he can still live. But they can destroy the stone. But that kind of fails, and the Scarlet Witch has to destroy the stone herself like with her hands and villain ha and like make vision explode and she succeeds of destroying a soul stone and then you go to yourself and you're like oh no because the green stone is light and you're like that's a time stone he reversed time to get the soul stone back and rip it out of vision it's like oh no and right when he has all the stones, Thor comes in and stabs him in the heart with his axe. And it's like, oh man, I think they're actually going to do it. And he's like, you should have gone for the brain. And he snaps. It's quiet. You see him in an orange place. And across from him is a young Glamour. People are saying this is Thanos in the Soul Stone. Like, just like with Gamora, like the finger snap, he just went to the stone. Kind of reflecting on what he did. And she's like, um, like kind of like, are you happy about this now? You finally won? He's, yeah. Everything, you go back to everything else, the gauntlet is kind of destroyed. It's, it was too powerful and it's destroyed. You see everybody again, but they're fading away. Like, whoosh, like they're turning into ash and flying away. Bucky, Falcon, Groot, Groot, Mantis, Star-Lord, Drax, Doctor Strange, Vision, Scarlet Witch. And Spider-Man dies. That's the part that killed me. He was the final death of the movie, kind of. And that killed me. This, this killed me. Now, I'm not gonna, like, kind of destroy it, you know, kind of represent, like, oh, you know what, they killed Spider-Man. Um, my friend Morgan, my friends Morgan, Sydney, and Austin gave me this balloon. I love you guys, thank you. So I'm not gonna really destroy this, but yeah. I, I, I legit, that's the only time I cried. They killed off Spider-Man. I love Tom Holland. Oh my god. Spider-Man Homecoming will be my top, number one favorite, um, like MCU movie, like even Infinity War can't beat it. Infinity War is number two in my list now, but they just like, like Tom Holland's like scared. He's like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go, and you just see him fading away. And the movie ends with Thanos sitting down, looking at a giant field, like smiling, like yeah, this is peaceful. And then the movie just ends right there. Now. Many scenes from the trailer does not make it in this movie. As in, they CGI'd, like, they just made scenes for trailers so you, they don't spoil the movie. Even Funko Pops even got, like, didn't even do anything, like, spoily. You know that Funko Pop where Hawk was supposed to jump out of the Hawkbuster? Never happened. You know this scene? Never happened. You know this scene? <laughs> Doesn't happen. So many scenes are CGI out, CGI'd out or CGI in, just so they don't spoil anything, and that's amazing. And this is kind of like a heartbreaking Infinity War movie. That's why everybody loves it. It's heartbreaking, but we understand. Everybody dies, and but Infinity Avengers Four should handle everything. Yeah, the post-credit scene is also something to Captain Marvel. But that just means Infinity, um, Avengers 4 should be awesome and amazing. Um, again, everybody who died in this movie is Heinle, Loki, <sighs> um, Goot, Gamora, Doctor Strange, Jax, Spoiler Lord, Collector, Mantis, Jax, Doctor Strange, I think I always said Doctor Strange, <sighs> Spider Man, um, Falcon, Vision, Scarlet Witch, Groot, and oh my god, it's just so heartbreaking. And Black Panther died too, almost forgot about that. So yeah, um, 
Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying to join it fast because like I'm running out of storage on my phone. And as always, guys, see you guys in the next video. You stay new and I say piggy oink. And um, um, this movie kind of broke me. I am a little bit depressed now. A, a lot of depressed. Oh my god, I am depressed. Uh, yeah, so see you guys in the next video.